Good morning, my friends. It is Tuesday, September 28th. I'm Dana Corsello, the Vicar of the Cathedral, and so pleased to be able to pray with you this morning. Let me begin. Let us enter into the presence of God. God, Creator Spirit, you are breath. Breathe new life into us. You are fire. Inflame our coldness with love. You are wind. Let us ride on your whirling wings. You are refuge. Our shelter is in you. Come and share the story of women. Let us listen to their voices, honor their lives, affirm their gifts, weep for their suffering, and celebrate their embodiment in the image of God. For their voices are our voices, their bodies our bodies, their struggles are our struggles. We share a common humanity. And I want to begin with this beautiful, this is Celtic. I got many responses last week. Many of you really enjoyed my Celtic prayer. So everything that I'm sharing with you this morning is Celtic. So this is called Lord of the Morning. And then I will explain why I just acknowledged women. Bless to us, O God, this fresh day made. In the chorus of birds, bless us. In the scent of blossom, bless us. In the crisp autumn air, bless us. Bless us and heal us, for we come to you in love and in trust. We come to you in expectant hope. O oh God, give us a well of tears to wash away the hurts of our lives. O oh God, give us a well of tears to cleanse the wounds, to bathe the battered face of our world. O oh God, give us tears, well of tears, or we are left like arid earth, unsanctified. <laughs> Beautiful. Now today, in Lesser Feasts and Fasts, is the feast of Paula and her daughter Eustochium. I have no idea how to pronounce that. Paula and Eustochium of Rome. They were monastics and scholars. They lived until the year 404, Paula, the mother, and then her daughter lived until 419, the years 404 and 419, and September 28th is their feast day. And so let me pray the collect honoring these two women. Let us pray. Compel us, O God, to attend diligently to your word, as did your faithful servants Paula and Eustochium, that by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit we may find it profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, and that thereby we may be made wise unto salvation through faith in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, the scripture from the Old Testament to celebrate these women is from the Apocrypha, Judith, the book of Judith, which we don't read very often, but which I think is quite fascinating and wonderful. So I'm going to read to you from Judith chapter 8, beginning at the ninth verse. Judith chapter 8, beginning at the ninth verse. When Judith heard the harsh words spoken by the people against the ruler, because they were faint for lack of water. And when she heard all that Uzziah said to them, and how he promised them under oath to surrender the town to the Assyrians after five days, she sent her maid, who was in charge of all that she possessed, to summon Uzziah and Shabris and Charmus, the eldest elders of her town. They came to her. And she said to them, Listen to me, rulers of the people of Bethulia. What you have said to the people today is not right. You have not even sworn and pronounced this oath between God and you, promising to surrender the town to our enemies, unless the Lord turns and helps us within so many days. Who are you to put God to the test today? and to set yourselves up in the place of God in human affairs. You were putting the Lord Almighty to the test, but you will never learn anything 
exclamation point. You cannot plumb the depths of the human heart or understand the workings of the human mind. How do you then expect to search out God who made all these things and find out that he does not, excuse me, who made all these things and find out his mind or comprehend his thoughts? No, my brothers, do not anger the Lord our God, for if he does not choose to help us within these five days, he has power to protect us with any time he pleases or even to destroy us in the presence of his enemies. Do not try to bind the purposes of the Lord our God, for God is not like a human being to be threatened or like a mere mortal to be worn over by pleading. Therefore, while we wait for his deliverance, let us call upon him to help us, and he will hear our voices if it pleases him. So this is Judith. Let me tell you about her. Apparently she was beautiful. She was a heroine. She was widowed. She was daring. Um, she, she was angry because she was upset that the, her Jewish countrymen, she was upset for them for not trusting that God would protect them, that God would look out for them as they were fighting the Assyrians, Assyrians led by King Nebuchadnezzar. I think we've all heard of that name. So she was scolding them for their lack of faith and scolding them for their plan that they had that, you know, if God didn't help them within five days, if God didn't defeat their enemy within these five days, they were going to surrender. So she's scolding them for their lack of faith. And what she ended up doing, she's really fascinating. You should read about Judith. She ended up befriending this Assyrian soldier. He was Nebuchadnezzar's, I think, second in command. And his name was Holofernes or something like that. Um, she befriended him. He, she earned his trust. She was being deceitful. And one night he got drunk and in his tent, she went in and <laughs> beheaded him. And so, of course, <laughs> the Jews prevail because once Nebuchadnezzar and his armies had lost, they were threatened and they kind of scattered. So anyway, you can see her in many beautiful pieces of art. Even the artist Clement, or K-L-I-M-T, he painted that really famous painting of her holding the head. You should look that up. I didn't realize it was Judith until I did some research. Now, so here we are talking about strong women who made a difference in the lives of their people. Well, this is who Paula and her daughter certainly were. Paula was the mother, Eustochium was the daughter. And so Paula, they were Romans. Paula was married off at a really young age. She had five kids and then, or children, and then was widowed at the age of 32. She was very wealthy. She was from a patrician family. And so what she did, she had a change, a change of heart. And she realized she was missing something in her life. She recreated herself. She sold her palace and turned it into a monastery. Um, she devoted her life to worship of God, asceticism, and serving the needy truly an incredible woman. We've read about many of these women. And so the reason why she's famous, and the important thing that we all need to know about her and her daughter, is that they basically took care of Jerome of Striden, who in the year 382 was commissioned by the Pope to translate the Bible into Latin. So Jerome, as everyone knows, they were his patrons. Jerome translated the Bible from, I think it was either Hebrew, Greek into Latin, the Vulgate. I'm sorry, I should, I should know that. Um, everyone knows about Jerome. So, but if it weren't for these two, Paula and her daughter, um, this would have never happened. He even admits to this. Um, they were fluent in Greek because Jerome taught them Hebrew and they followed him to Bethlehem where they literally revised his translations, edited his works, they became scribes. And so people say that, and he said himself, that without them, 
the version, the Latin version of the Bible, the Vulgate would not have happened. So I think that's pretty amazing. So I thought that was important to share with you. Okay, my friends. Now in this beautiful book I have of Celtic, this is actually liturgy from Iona. They have this confession, it's called the Rag and Bone Confession. And I'm going to lead that now. There are lumps under our carpet that the vacuum won't vanquish. There are cats tied in bags, would be off like a flash. Skeletons in the cupboards, tap tap on the doors. There is nothing hidden, but that's going to get out. So let's get over it with God. There's a pile at the foot of the cross of the things we could do without. Make us glad we brought them to you who carries away the sins of the world and grant in their place pardon and grace and your call to be following always. And so my friends, together in worship, we face what we might not face alone. That we are greedy, but refuse to love our bodies. That we are selfish, but refuse to love ourselves. That we are lazy, but refuse to work for peace. That we are human, but refuse to love the earth. These we share in silence as we remember our own faults and failings. So what is it this day? What do you need to be forgiven for? What are your faults and failings that you just need to put at the foot of the cross? Vacuum it up or not? What is it that you need to get over? But of course, only with God. Name those. God of the turning tide, change us so that the energy of your forgiveness flows into bold and joyful action, into a humility that is not defeatism, into a strength and confidence to be vulnerable. Amen. Now I'll continue with this prayer. This is called Your Kingdom Come. Lord, you know that we love you, and we know what you ask us to do. But for those times when we have been too busy, when we have been hard-hearted, when we have been lukewarm, we say sorry and ask for your forgiving love. Prepare us for your way, O Lord. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Lord, you know our good intentions and we know your will, but hold us back long enough to listen to those in need and to learn from them and to learn of our own need. Where we think we are sent, make us ready to receive. Where we are keen to watch, make us ready to learn. Prepare us for your way, O Lord. Your kingdom come, your will be done. And then, Lord, you know our deepest desires, and we know the vision of your kingdom. We bring before you those elements in our lives in need of your transforming power that which we misuse or neglect, that which we most reluctantly let go of, that which we believe is not good enough. Inspire us and disturb us to examine our deepest desires. Prepare us for your way, O Lord. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Lord, you know our potential, but what is your purpose for our lives? In our uncertainty, and in the knowledge of your faithfulness, prepare us for your way, O Lord. Your kingdom come, your will be done. My friends, I hope that today you will be blessed. I hope that God will shine God's holy love and light and spirit upon you and inspire you. And I pray that all of those whom you love and all of those whom you know are suffering, and especially for our nation at this moment, that God is with us and that God will get us through this day, one day at a time. And so may God's love, mercy, and may God's grace be with you and bless you now and always. 
雨。